So the third is what is his being masbir? The chiddush of the Tikkuni Zohar, as explained by the Fidik Rebbe, as expounded by the Rebbe, the two Perushim and Oyrin Sof. The first one is, I'm just going to, so the first one is that it's the Oyr, Oyr that, that comes from the Ein Sof, but that doesn't mean the Oyr itself is. And the second Pirush, that the Oyr itself is Ein Sof, is boundless. And that's the Pirush of the Tikkuni Zoya, that Oyr in Sof, the Maila Maila Adon Ket, so the Mata Mat Adon Tachlis. And the Diak of the first paragraph, what he explained in the first paragraph of his Gimel is, that the Chayre he brought to Shaila brought down in by the Rame, his name was uh, uh, Menachem, Menachem Mazari of Pano, Italian Makubal. And likewise, the same question which I'm about to share is also brought in the Placharimen, the Sefer Placharimen from the Bill of Parisha. But why do we say ain't sof? We should rather say ain't chila. Because Hashem can create that which has no end, but has a beginning. So something which is ain't soft doesn't mean doesn't, it has no beginning. But something which has no beginning certainly has no end. So the Chorah, it would be more, it would, be, it would, be, it would make more, why, they, why did the, it's language, just, they're asking in the language of the Kabbalim. Why did the Kabbalim speak about Bebishter as, as the Eir in Sof Baruch so the answer is that the emes, it's not going on atzimus. What is it talking about, Tanke? As implied by the word, oil in self, Hashem is revelation. And so there is a tchila. The tchila is the ebishter. However, here's the paradox. Nonetheless, the oil, which is a ha'ora only, it's his revelation. So this revelation, that's the whole mind is going on to explain, as the Fidik Rebbe said, the Kitz and the Rebbe elaborates, that this property of true bleakfulness is carried through in every aspect of the Eir's expression. So the Eibishter has decided that the truth of his truly boundless being, which includes Ein Le Kadman, Ein Le Tchila rather, is carried through by the by the by his revelation in all of creation, even post Simpson and certainly pre Simpson. And this is what the Maimba goes on to elaborate. Well, let's continue. So the point is, he, so that was that was that that paragraph. The second paragraph of his Gimel pointed out the difference between Eir and Shefa. This is all language that the Mukabalim chose. And the difference between Shef and Oyer, as we explained yesterday, that Ashpa is substance. It's like a teacher teaching where he's giving of himself. And he's involved, invested in teaching. Or the classic example is water that flows from a spring. So in that case, even after the teacher is gone, he, the lesson that which he taught is present within the Makabal, whereas Oyer, we said, Oyer is, is, is having effect without engagement, just being self and having an effect on the environment, being seen, being observed, but not engaged. Oyer is Me'in Amor. Hashpa affects the mashpia, for better or for worse. First, what exhausts him. The truth is, he grows from mashpa. 
But the fact that oil emanates from the moir doesn't affect the moir. And that's its mile, even though it's a, only a ha'oda. Unlike a shpo, we're actually giving something. You invested a piece of yourself. In oil, you're not giving anything. You just are, and you're being seen. But the mile of this is that since oil is me'en ha'moir, what's being seen? You in your totality. Oil reveals in an unadulterated, uncompromised manner. Light reveals that which it reveals. Whether we speak about classic light as in uh, light emanating from a sun, or as we have expressed it, it means any object, but the light that is bouncing off the object that enters the eye that you see, you see an absolutely faithful rendition, uncompromised of the object. That's the mile of oil. On the one hand, it's only our order. What do you have? What are you seeing? What's the image that you have? What relationship do you have with that which you see? Just light. It's literally what it is. Because there's light that is bouncing off the object. You see it. So all you have is light. On the other hand, what do you have? You have it. What are you seeing? You're seeing it. But there's a, whereas Ashpa, Ashpa is... The mild of Ashba is that the, the other is invested in you and is given a piece of itself to you or himself. The chsorin of Ashba is that it's that's just a piece. It's a seichel, the idea that the teacher taught, whatever the Ashba happens to be, the nature of the Ashba. All to bring out that the oil which emanates from the mo'er carries the truth of the mo'er purely in that it's only tchil of only self. The mile of mile adin kertz, the mat and mat adin tachis. That's the mile of where. So now that I was going to trace, as the Fidik Rebbe does, be kitzer in the Maimer, this property of true bleakfulness in every expression of the oil. Lifnet simtum and post simtum. Let's begin. This that the oil carries, the, the true boundlessness of the moir, which includes only tchila, even though the oil has a tchila. That's the paradox when you need to grasp. The oil has a beginning. It emanates from a source. On the other hand, the source doesn't. The oil reveals and carries that truth. Is that clear? So this is at kedekach shmitzadzeh nase al yodo yisave sabriya yesh ma'ayin. The oil creates yesh ma'ayin. He's going to elaborate. In order to create yesh ma'ayin, this needs the yesh amiti. And the oil, however, is the means by which Hashem creates through his revelation and through his ten, through his ten svidas, as he goes on to explain now. Let's, let's just learn some of the oasis and then try and grasp what he's saying. As the Alteb explains, in the well known, the Kedush Simen Chof, which begins with the words, he and his life force is one. E and his causations, which means the Kalim, are one that which has caused to come into being. Are one. Shabriya Yeshma Ayin, Al Trebe says that in the Geras HaKridosh, the creative force which creates something out of nothing, which is only possible by Atz from Atzmos. But in actual fact, how does God create? It's the kalim of, of the ten svidas, the ten utterances. In which is invest, invested the kav ma'ir in sof. Shohu, as we're saying now, the oir reveals the truth of the ma'ir, which is, what's the ma'ir? The very essence the very core and essence of the, literally the emanator, the one from whom all things emanate. This is 
virtually the Lashon of the Rebbe in Tanya, that his being is not from any other, God forbid, but his being is from his being, or, or restated he is because he is. The Eino Olum, this is quoting from Tanya, the Eino Olum is a, and it's not a result of any cause that preceded him, God forbid. Continuing in Lashon, and therefore he alone, he alone that has no, nothing precedes him, can create that something out of nothing, which also has the sense, as he goes on to say, that nothing precedes it. In this first the words in Tanya, he can create something, something from absolute nothingness. Created in such a way that the yesh emerges without feeling whatsoever. There's nothing that precedes it. That's how we feel. We can know that there's a God, but what do we feel? We feel our intrinsic entity, intrinsic selves, and we feel our intrinsic selves because the because the Maitzel, the Moir, the Etzel, who's God, the true Yesha Miti, in other words, is what creates us. But as you go on to explain, via the Oir, via the ten spheres, which carry this true truth of the Yesha Miti, as he goes on to explain. He elaborates. He just basically quoted Tal Tereb in Tanya. And we, as we quoted it, we elaborated somewhat. But Tereb now goes further. Then he brings Nivra Kazet to create such an entity. That's us. This entity should feel that nothing precedes it. can only come from an entity, a truth, that likewise is such. The yesh amiti, in other words. She'ein lo ilo v'sid m'shakod m'lo, that has no cause that precedes it. Ki ilo ho'iso ha'briya m'pchinas yesh lo ilo v'sid, but if creation to begin with, it's the, it's, it's creative source, would not be the moi, not the maitzel, atmos for our purposes but a level that has a cause that precedes it, and that's where the creative force begins, what kind of creation would be the result? The creative force will, will produce that. You can only produce that which is you. You can't produce something which is not you. So if what the creative force is that which comes from a source, then the best it could create is that which also feels it comes from the source. As a hoya never gamal then which is not God's desire, then creation would also. The paradox is that if creation would come from any lower levels of air per se, then creation would feel bottle. Dafke because it comes from oir meina moir atmos the yesha miti, therefore the yesha never feels also as Pari says. Pare said, I am the Nile and I made myself. I am and I created myself. The ultimate yeshes, which we all really uh, experience without saying it because we know the truth. And so. But that's the hergish. Why do we have this hergish? Because we're created by that which Taka has no sibir. Shwayanirgish actually told me, actually, ill of a sibir would feel if. Our source would not be the etzim. Then we would feel constantly that we have a cause, that we are a, a cause that produces us, because our creative source is that. And that would be carried and and, and present in the creation. The Kivan However, the fact is we see that in creations down here. <laughs> we do not feel that there is a, a cause that precedes them from which we are created. 
‫היינו, אני חושב, אפילו ‫אני ורואים שמבינים מה הסיגים ‫בתכלס, אבל נבוא סוגר, ‫אבן עוד קריאשיונס, ‫הומניטי. ‫היא מי אבן בי אינקלודינג ‫מלוכים אינדלם, ‫בבריאה, אני לא יודע. But at any rate, even those creations that understand the absolute understanding, clarity, that they don't exist in a vacuum, that there is a cause that resists, that's responsible for their being from which they were created. Nonetheless, that's what's understood. But what's this experience? What is the experience? We feel that we are coming from nothing. We just are. What is behind the yesh? What is yesh? The yesh mind. That the nivra is a yesh. We look at the 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 yesh. But the creator is no thing. Nothing. No experience. She'en and metzi is not in our world at all. Of experience. Completely beyond our care. Although we know that we don't cannot exist in the vacuum, and that there must be a source that created us. So what's the hergish of the Nivroim down here, when we are, is that So that there is no cause, we just simply are. That's the given, that's the first reality, I am. No. I think therefore I am, that's exactly what it's saying. But so since that is what the reality is here, therefore Ariel concludes concluding the point. We have to say, therefore, what's the responsible for this sense of utter independence and more than independence? We don't even feel the source, complete sense of self. It's because where the Yisavas come from? It's from the Yesha Nivr, of Yesha Miti. The Mahusim Atzmus Shalamayt Sebarcho, he, Shemitziyus Atzmus, his being is from his being, he is because he is Vayna Olul, and he's not a result, may he's a Ilish Kodle Chas V'Shol. So far, what do you establish? He's elaborating what Dalt Rebbe says, in Perechach, in Sim, in, in, uh, in the Geras HaKadosh, that creation, Yesh Ma'ayim, comes from the Yesh Amiti. The Mo'er, or the Maitzel, as he calls it here. But then the Alt Rebbe said, that creation happens through the Ten Sviris. Look at the beginning of the quote. Ma'kelim the Yud Sviris, in which is invested the Oir. So, so far he's saying that the Oed, the Oed which has a beginning, but nonetheless carries, carries with it the Maitzel. In other words, the Oed which is, on the one hand, the net nature of Oed is that it has a source that precedes it, and it's only a consequence. Nonetheless, it carries the Maitzel, and it creates that which does not feel that it is a consequence, but it is fundamentally. Why? Because Oyer and, and, and the Oyer, the creative force, which is the Oyer in, in essence, as it goes on to explain, is an atmistic property which creates atmistic entities, meaning entities that feel intrinsically and first and foremost, that's the only thing they feel really is. I think therefore I am, is the self. It's all we feel. Omnam, even though, however, go in continuing in the text, the Briyesh Mayim Bepeyel, the actual creation, is Makem, the Yutzvidus, is the Kem of the Yutzvidus, the, the, the ten, the ten, uh, ten Mamores. Shmem, Olu Beshakav, Mayr in Sof, in which is invested the Kav of Layr in Sof, which is Shayr and Kain, Hamayr Musrat Musay. So it's two things here. Invested in the Esosphiris is the oil, which is in our as we're saying. 
Why do you need a tenth vidus? Come over, get a sack of the shom, shirtly, she ye ha yes as a never the coherence of Balgvul or Mida. Nor that this creation should not only have this sense of I am, but a finite, limited creation. What a chutzpah. A little finite creation feels the, the, the ultimate audacity. A finite creation, he knows he's finite. If he knows he's finite, he should certainly, in his hergish, feel his source. He doesn't. Even in his finite youth, he has this absolute I am, and that's all you think I'm certain of in my experience. So what gives this sense, what, what creates that little gvul in the end of the day, it's the tense vidas, the tzimtzum, although he's speaking of the pre-tzimtzum, we'll soon see. But leave that aside for a second. Back in the, in the words of the mind, but in order that this yesh, which is created by the kecha in self, which is mena moir and so on, should be balgvulomida, therefore limited and finite and bound, is lavish to, to that end that Rashem desires to create a tachtun in, in a limited one. So this lavish oil itself became the tzvira datzilas. So the oil itself, it becomes invested in finitude itself, which is ten tzviras of atzilas. But so we have both mildest. This is the fusion of Gvul and Blikvul and the very creative force. The true Blikvul and Gvul creating an entity that is I am that I am and limited. So the in itself is That's the whole point of that. that the Nebish is one absolutely with the Eir as with the Kalim that produce the, the finite creation. The unity is absolute. So the point of the tense videos is to create what? Balgvulomida, in which is invested the Eir itself and united. With the Kalim livery behind Val Yodan Bruin Balik Vulutachlis to create in them and through them creations which are finite and limited. I will add to me and I said that the Tzorich Iyun that livery behind Val Yodan. Val Yodan understand what's livery behind to create behind in them. Or could be behind with them. Don't know. Sorry, I don't know if there's any burium on this lotion or not. At any rate, I will add some in your naisava sadnivru who may himself that the creative force that the Yutzvidas give the finitude, but the creative force is not himself. Like Dalta says, then again, Sakhedis that never have a kecha himself. The Hainu kecha atmos. And what is koyach? Koyach means a force, a force unlike light, which is constantly connected, a force ostensibly is separate. You throw a stone. So it's your koyach that, that carries the stone. It's completely separate from you. Surrounding and enveloping the stone, a rocket ship has launched the same same thing. Is launched, it propels further, but the the, the actual uh, propulsion is separate. So that's why the lotion is kriach because we don't. It creates creations that we don't feel the source. The created being is not created. The Eden Sof is invested in the Yutzvidus producing Koyach. Koyach in Sof. Because the created being does not feel the creative force. 
that's why for the created being's perspective, it's yesh ma'ayin, I come from nothing, meaning no thing in my world whatsoever, nothing I can relate to, and nothing that I can experience. So all of this is created by what? What's the creative force? Is the oil. So Mizem moving, this is all to bring out the mile of the true bleak, bleak fullness, the true transparency of the oil, that it conveys the oil unadulterated, as it concludes. Mizem moving at Kama Eirum Ena Moir. So we see now how to what degree the oil is of the moir. Shemoyz Bavan Shadei Oir Nat Shadei Dei Oir Nas is a Shaykhistan Moir. It's not only through the oil we can know of the moir itself is extraordinary. El oid zayish mitzada yoyisim in amoir. The oil itself has this creative atmosphere property. Since it's been amoir yesh begal ma'inyan sheli ilu v'sibel shakad maloi, it itself carries the true belit chila without beginning. The ain't self. Which is called Ein Sof, because it's only Oir. The Emes also carries the truth of Atmos, reveals that, expresses that in, 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 as the creative force, as the creative force of creation, which is Me'en Amoir, without beginning. And that's why it creates that which those th- it creates that which feels it also has no beginning. Meaning, this is he's saying what I just said now. That even though the oil itself, it's merely our order. It's not like Ashpah, the Ibish is giving of himself. It's the merest glimmer, the oil, light, what's light, there's no substance. Again, just remember, you're looking at the mountain and the image of the mountains in your head. This is only the merest, it's a ha'ara, it's a merest, it's literally the light of the mountain, not the mountain. It's only a ha'ara of ad kedikach shikasher Hashem eshikas. And there's using the classic meaning of oil as in rays. It's the same thing. So when the sun sets, mitachas leifek under the horizon, his battle calling in the oil, you don't see the light anymore. The lake is shefa, unlike ashpo. The dashpo remains after the mashpi has departed. The teacher teaches the seichel is there. Children, the tamidim have the idea on their heads. They've learned. But if the whole ashpo is just the presence of the teacher, the teacher is gone. It's over. And that's what oil is. Oil is not isaskus, not islapsus. Oil is just being and being seen. Even though it's only on the other hand, because it's it's a hard bemis, it's me'ain hamoyer. It completely expresses the moyer. Shalachin yesh bekerich ain sof, and therefore the oyer itself is creative power and energy as the true ain sof. Yesh be'afilo in shein le'ilu v'sibur shakad melechas v'sholem, and reveals also and creates that which feels it has no it has no no cause. And it reveals that it reveals the oil reveals that the Abishtir has no beginning, even though the oil has a beginning. That's the paradox. So the chen yechiluli is al yod ibri yeshma'in. Therefore, can create yeshma'in. Yet we're clear. Mavaya ba ma'imen explains there in Perik Yud Beis. She says al pidish mashkos vat the konizay. This is the meaning of the konizay. It's oil in soft for the matah the intachnis. Shagilo is going to explain further in the Maimon now that the Giloi and the Spashta Shlim Bechinas ain't of all of the levels it carries, this Atzmiz Dika, true Moir Maitzel, all the same for our purposes, the source, the essence, it carries this. Shagdeze Nasabriyas Kol Seydish Talshos Ad Lamat Ad Intachlis. And that's how creation comes into being with what? With this property of the Moir carried by the Oir, as he will demonstrate. Sviris Adin Ketz, and even all the way down to Ilama Zeha Gashmi. Post symptom. I hope we're somewhat clear. Yeah. Good.
Now you look at the next plane, there's still the Amagil student. 